uh, uh, Freedom Journal Institute was started a number of years ago because we felt like the church was not acting the way the church is supposed to be acting as far as I was concerned. We said that we were pro-life and we were voting for people who weren't pro-life. We said we were pro-traditional family, but we were voting for people who weren't. And so we started to think about, okay, what do we do? How do we minister to the church in general and the African-American church in particular? And one of the things we decided we were gonna do was make sure that Freedom Journal Institute was to advance the kingdom of God. This is our mission, to advance the kingdom of God through social, through social engagement and education rooted in a biblical worldview. So our thing is, we are preaching the gospel. We're, we're more preaching the gospel to the church itself to live it out. Amen. It's one thing to, to hear the gospel and say, yeah, I accept Christ as my savior. It's another thing then to walk it out. Amen. And so we've got to learn how to walk it out. What does that mean? How does God influence everything that we do? Everything in every area, not compartmentalize certain things and say, okay, Jesus, you can have this part, but you can't have this part. Or like what's happening with Black Lives Matter, that we're putting our race ahead of our Christianity. And so then we started Black Families Matter, but we started it as an alternative to Black Lives Matter. And the point was, if we really care about black lives, let's talk about the family. Because if we do something with the family, then we can do something about saving people's lives. And we can talk about not only black families, we can talk about white families, we can talk about Asian families, we can talk about Hispanic families, and not get upset about it. We can just talk about families in general because we know that the number one uh, foundation in our society is the family. Amen. I'm Dr. Rich Mantuan. For 35 years, my dental practice has been in the Flossmore Professional Building, and for the last two and a half years, we've had Planned Parenthood as a neighbor. It, in practically the time needed to birth a baby, enough funds were raised from this local community to allow Aid for Women, our chosen charitable pregnancy help center, to open its doors in March of 2019, immediately next door to Planned Parenthood, because the corner office in Flossmore Commons just happened to be vacant in the perfect location. No accidents. Having the rally at this location is a cause for great, great hope, because this is the time that abortion must be unmasked for the damage it does to individuals and families. The no-show rate for scheduled abortions rises as high as 75% when 40 days for life vigil participants are present outside. That's a statistic disclosed by Planned Parenthood itself. You know, there have been a lot of people making a lot of declarations about a lot of things lately. You got a lot of people making loud noises saying that a whole bunch of stuff matters. People are saying black lives matter. People are saying blue lives matter. People are saying all lives matter. We're out here saying black families matter. And all of that is good in itself. But I'm here to let you know today that unless it's built on the foundation of a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, unless it's built on the idea that Jesus is King, that He is Lord, unless it's de dedicated to the precept that our hearts and our allegiance need to be turned to God, it does not matter at all. Because I'm here to tell you that outside of Jesus Christ, nothing else matters. Can you say that? You know, in Daniel chapter 3, it tells the story about those Hebrew boys. I want to be one of those Hebrew boys, Pastor Guys. You heard that story that said that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, built a 90-foot statue made out of gold. And he called all of the leaders and all of the officials and all of the governors, mayors, and all of the leaders and all the community. He called them together and he said, listen, when you hear the trumpet, when you hear the lyre, when you hear the music, I want you to instantly bow on your knees and worship the idol. But it wasn't long that some of his people came to him and said, King, we got a problem. Those Hebrew guys, those ones that you put over the affairs of the state, they're not paying you any attention because they don't bow and they don't worship. The king said, if you don't do this, you will get the fiery furnace. And when they were challenged on it, they said, you can burn us, you can do whatever you want, but we will not bow to the music. Black Lives Matter today are requiring that same kind of response from us, is that when they play the music, we are required to bow. And if you don't bow, they would seek to destroy you. They would seek to take, your, to take everything away from you because it's not acceptance that they want, it's submission. But I'm here to say today that as people of God, we have a responsibility to submit to no one but to Jesus Christ. And I don't care what you say, you can't tell me I gotta say Black Lives Matter. You can't tell me I can't say that all lives matter. 
I'm standing in front of a temple of death over here. You don't think I believe all lives matter or black lives are important? I sat on this corner days and days and hours and hours praying that God would tear down these temples of death. So I'm the one who believes that black lives matter. Cause I believe that black babies' lives matter. So you will not get me to bow and worship to the idol of this world. I just will not do it. If I be burned, let me be burned. So as I stand before you here today, I stand as a 14 year home educator. So my passion with education has went further than I even desired, amen. I often pray and cry to God, how did I get here? How did I get here? But the state of education is disheartening. What's happening to our children on today? Yes, mine are homeschool. I have a homeschool to college graduate. I thank God. So I can stand here today to say, black families, you can teach your children. The devil is a lie. Yes, we can teach our children. We're not inadequate. We don't have lack of anything. Because with God, everything is sufficient. And his grace will be sufficient for you on today. I had that baby at 17 years old. So don't tell me what God won't do. Amen. And I got three more that I'm homeschooling. And I'll homeschool my grandchildren if the Lord let me live to see it. And academics is important. I bless God for education. I bless God I was able to get mine, no doubt. My children, my daughter just finished college. I'm not saying education is not important, but it's not the way to your matter. God designed the family as an expression of his spiritual truth to reflect his image and fulfill a critical role in the earth. God is commanding parents. This is not a negotiation. Parents are to be stewards and catalysts in instituting and demonstrating righteousness, morality, and a practical way of life to their children. This also sets the precedence of ensuring that his knowledge, not these indoctrinated cesspools, that his knowledge will be carried from generation to generation. Come on, our children deserve so much better. Can we clap our children today? Can we praise God? Because they are the future on today. They are the next politician, doctor, lawyer, teacher. We act like humans, adults just drop from the sky. We all started as kids. When are we gonna sacrifice ourselves as parents and protect our children? Amen. Our children deserve this. They are the heritage of the Lord. Unique treasure vessels bearing his image and his likeness. This is time now. The time is now we're losing generations to this onslaught of indoctrination. And the time is now that we pray that God, as he gave Daniel the three Hebrew boys, ten times the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Pray for your children. Consider getting your children out of government schools. It's time to protect them. It's time to protect their innocence because you will be held accountable. Blood will be on your hand for your kids. You're not exempt from the commandments of God to protect the innocence of your children. I've been sitting over here looking at that sign for Planned Parenthood and I don't know about you but that's false advertising. That's not Planned Parenthood, that's Planned Genocide. That's right. Every time I hear Black Lives Matter, I always want to ask them, which ones matter to you? Because I believe all Black Lives Matter. From conception to natural death and all of it needs to be protected. If you're getting someone pregnant and then walking away or leaving the abortion issue up to her because it's her body, you're not providing and you're not protecting your children. You're avoiding that. And you're, you're not upholding the duty that God has given you. There's a lot of women that actually believe I don't need a man. And technically, it's true. I don't need him to survive but I deserve him, and so does every other woman. Yes. Yes. Deserve to have a partner yes. to help them because we all have those days when the rug is pulled out from underneath us. Yes. And everyone deserves to have that partner. Yes. And everyone deserves that. And I, I really hope we can get more people together who are part of the two-parent household and Christians and ministers and churches to start mentoring to our young people because they need this example. They don't realize just how good and holy the family unit is. We are at a very dangerous point in our society right now. We have fringe elements dictating policy through violence and mob action instead of through the democratic process. 
they are also influencing policy in corporate America. If God desires unity, we should not be surprised to see Satan working overtime to divide us. We must not only be watchful for Satan's prowling ploys, but we must be intentional about hiding within our hearts biblical truths and principles which enable us to dispel the lies of our culture, the lies that Satan wants us to buy. Satan wants us to believe that one race, one skin color is superior to every other. It's a lie. Scripture warns us in Romans 12, 3, not to think more highly of ourselves, but to think, to think soberly about how God deals with each of us. If God's word says that we're all made in his image, and we are all fearfully and wonderfully made and created from one blood, we have absolutely no right to assert any other claim. God alone is the author of life. He determines how we're to be like him and how special we are in his grand plan. We have zero authority to claim special status, privilege, or standing in his created order. We must pray regularly that God would raise up bold Christian leaders in the Chicago region and throughout the state and nation. Pray for our local authorities. Governor Pritzker, yeah, pray for them state lawmakers, county board members, and our local mayors, and the men and women who serve in our neighborhoods as police officers, like that gentleman there. Yeah. Finally, please pray for, for national repentance and revival. Repentance has got to come before revival. We need to ask God to forgive us for the sin of the murder of innocent pro, uh, pre-born babies. Thank you. Because after all is said and done, it's an issue of the heart, right? It's an issue of the heart. We can have events like this. Uh, we can pa pass uh, legislation till the cows come home, and I'm, I'm all for that, and another bill, and another protest, and that this, that, and the other, but unless the human heart is changed. Uh, 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 Dr. Eric, you know, they can pass a law to say that I must like you but if my heart hasn't been changed, right? Right. Amen. Really? What, what are we saying? Amen. As you can tell, I am an immigrant. I speak differently, right? My English is different. I pronounce things differently. However, I want to tell you here today that I bring a different perspective. I was born in Nigeria, a very conservative culture. I was born into a Christian home. So I never converted, I was born into it. I was raised in a conservative home, in a conservative culture, in a conservative country, right? So here's what happened to me when I moved to the United States in the early 90s. I never encountered this racism conversation and race and white and black until I moved to the United States. Yeah, it wasn't in my consciousness that white people are different and black people are different. I mean, I'm from Africa, so I understand colonialism, right? I, I get that. I grew older in the United States. I realized that things have to change. I'm not gonna waste your time. I just wanna share those perceptions and perspectives with you, and it has led me to where I am today. I stand for biblical principles. I am pro-life. It's a word I learned in the US. It wasn't an option for me. <laughs> I pray with you. Uh, may God forgive us. Uh, may God heal this land. Uh, black lives matter. All lives matter. White lives matter. People of God matter. Every God's creature matters. And I'm gonna leave you with this. Kids, and I'm gonna leave you with this specifically. In your perspective, there must be a community of accountability. I want to add this to that. Put God in that community of your accountability. What would God want? Your frame of reference should be informed at all times by biblical principles and your commitment to the faith that you share. Marriage and family life function to satisfy the longings of the heart. 
to give and receive unconditional love, to reinforce a sense of being and belonging, to welcome and ensure the full physical and emotional development of children, and to establish and perpetuate the instruction of moral principles and values from one generation to the next. Our earnest conviction is that many of the black community's problems, as well as other communities, could be solved if we gave more attention to building strong and healthy families. We believe that to minimize confrontations with the police, eliminate visits to the abortion clinics, school dropouts and delinquency, incarcerations, as well as the illicit use of drugs and drug suppliers, we must focus on combating the underlying problem, the dysfunction and disintegration of the black family. Um, the first institution that God created was the family. And the first institution that the devil attacked was the family and still is the family to tear the fiber of it down and what, is, what has resulted in us questioning the definition of a gender and the definition of, of, of justice and equal rights and, and whether or not my skin tone has anything to do with my cognitive process are, are things that should have never been questioned or are meant to been, have been questioned. But we've questioned them down through the years to the point where we've gotten here and we've lost our identity identity as a people, as an ethnicity, as a culture, and we've lost it so much so that we were willing to give up the very first institution that God created to throw it all away for a very notion of a thought. This ends our, uh, our rally. Thank you for coming out. God bless you. Thank you. And uh, till the next time we do this, because we will do it again. Thank you. God bless you.